<laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to our Facebook Live this Wednesday. Um, I do have a special guest with me. Hello. Uh, you introduce yourself. I'm Chantelle. She's been in a few of different videos. Uh, Diana is out sick right now, uh, but she will be back next week. So, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about pantographs. Pantograph patterns. Yes. Okay. So this is a little more of Chantelle's expertise. I work on the computerized machine. She has a hand-guided model. Yes. Um, so she is here with me to talk about um, what the pantographs do, what they are, mm -hmm. what designs we have, how they can uh, start with beginner, kind of middle, then you can get to your more advanced ones, yep. um, and different stuff like that. Yep. Just so, all sorts of things. Go ahead. So. <laughs> <laughs> That we, there's so many different types of pantographs that you can use. Um, we do have the easy ones. Um, let's start off with actually, let's talk about the machines first real okay, quick. Go ahead. There are um, different type of rope sizes that you have in your machine. And by your rope sizes, um, we have different sizes of pantographs that you can use. Just hold on to I'm that. Just hold okay. to it. it keeps running away. Okay. <laughs> and so, um, so we're going to kind of give you an idea of what size pantograph that you need for your throat size. So you're looking at a size 18 throat. Okay. You're going to need a size 10 inch pantograph. Okay. So, um, and then when you go up, and these, the your throat size of a 22, would be a 12 inch pantograph. That and you that would, would be your maximum. That, you that would be your to. max that you can okay. go up to. So anything under 12 inches you could do okay. on the 22. Or 12 or under. And yes. so the reason that um, we, we're kind of giving you the guidelines is because you, you hear an 18 inch throat. Um, when you hear that, you're normally looking about 13 and a quarter of actual mm -hmm. quilting area. Yes. So we say to do at least you know, what is it, a 10, um, the, you know, a, the biggest a max, a 10. Mm -hmm. And that's because as you roll up, let's say you have a king size quilt, yeah. it starts to get really bulked up on your roller. That's so right. your throat size will, can, will decrease just a little bit. So if you have that 10, you've got three and a quarter inches of give room mm -hmm. um, that you can work with. So we're kind of giving you the guidelines just to see which ones will work best for you. Okay, continue. Okay, <laughs> and then on a 20 inch throat, um, the, a 26, 26, <laughs> I'm sorry, I said 20, <laughs> you will use a 14 inch pantograph. And then on a 30 inch throat, you would use a 16 inch pantograph. Normally, after 16, it ends up being <coughs> excuse me, ends up being a little too big because yeah. it's just such a big pattern. Mm -hmm. um, I see. So this is a 14 inch. You see, this is just a big pattern. Of course, it's a little more intricate. So we're going to show this one a little later. Um, but so you, that's how you kind of get your ideas and designs. Yeah, and those are the throat sizes that Gamel has. There's other throat sizes out Wait, there no. that you can work with, um, but just that kind of gives you an idea of the 18 through the 30. So that's the ones that we're most common seeing. We have an 18, 22, 26, and 30 here. So it's the ones um, that we most have, but I know there's 20 inch throats out there, 17 inch throats. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of gives you an idea where to start. Um, so you can pick which, one, which, which pantograph is right for you. And there's also the smaller throats that are yes, like... Yes, mid, mid-arm machines. Mid-arm machines. Even smaller than that, yeah. yes. And these work also for mid-arm machines. Right. So. Yeah, it just depends on your picking out your pattern. So, and normally when you do a mid-arm machine, you want to look to probably a four to five inch pattern. Um, we have patterns here that there are easy combos, and there's about, what, is there five? There's, there's five. five or six. I think there's five. Is it yeah, five? five? Okay, there's five. There's five patterns on that sheet of, on this roll. So five, and they're the, they're the five inch pattern, so they'll work for your mid-arm machine. Um, and you just kind of cut them down. So normally mm -hmm. you'll get a pattern in the mail if you order one from us or different pattern designers. It'll come like this on a nice roll. These are 24 inches yep, wide. 24. Um, and they'll have multiple different sizes on the roll. And you can see that there are little... Yeah, I was gonna say show. Yeah, I'm getting up there. <laughs> you can see that there are lines, dotted lines, along this pattern. And you would just cut right down that line, and that would give you the different sizes of the patterns that you have. Perfect. Okay. There we go. It's like a wand. <laughs> a wand? Yes. Or like a scepter. <laughs> no, I have kids. It's a uh, wand. It's a wand. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. So we have uh, separated the patterns into kind of if you're starting off fresh, give you an idea of what easy patterns to middle of the road patterns to very intricate patterns. So you kind of have an idea of exactly where you're going. Um, with them. With them. Yeah. Okay. So. so let's start with this one. So this is meandering. Yes. Very. Yeah, we have one. It's one of my favorite. So this is this is kind of a, this is the basic starting overall pattern. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely works for doing those 
easy designs. If you're doing t-shirt quilts, you just want something to hold it together, not take away from the t-shirts. Meandering is really the way to go. Yeah. Um, because it'll take care of that. Yeah. Uh, and I you. do a lot of memory quilts. And so on the memory quilts, I do this as well. On the, on the meandering? Because mm -hmm. they don't want it to, the, the quilting to take away from everything exactly. that's on the quilt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll roll that one up if you want to start working on this. Okay. One. And so this one's a really nice one as well. It is called Simple Feather Meandering. Which it, it looks like it's a little bit harder, but it really isn't by the feathers and everything that's on it. Um, it's pretty easy to kind of go with the flow. It's one of my favorites, um, like the meandering. It's one. It's something that you can do with just about anything. Yeah, it works really well. You see, you have your four different feathers right here, and then it goes into different um, circles, swirls, points that you can do. Oh, is it too far away? Okay, I think it's too far away. Let me bring it a little closer. Okay, I can't quite get around. You're good. We'll grab that. Get the idea up there. Perfect idea. Okay, so it's a little closer for you. Um, so it gives you the feathers that you have here. Then you can look at um, different parts of the design that we have. We'll kind of bring it back and forth. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next one. All right. We'll go ahead and stay in front. Yeah, we'll stay in front so we can continue to see them. I think we had a question when I was walking back around the camera, so you might want to check that. Okay. Um, Do we have a question? Yeah, I'll, I'll pick it back. I'm okay. Yes. Um, on the, the, mean, the meandering through the whole t-shirt quilt. Right. So, yes. And c to go over the cut, the... Um, the stuff that's on the t-shirts. Yeah, you can go over the stuff that's on t-shirts. Some customers, they'll not, they won't want that. I don't know if we're too close to the camera. I gotta back know. away a little bit. We're good? Okay. Um, some customers might not want that idea of, if, okay, I'm too close. <laughs> All right, I'm backing up. I'm backing up. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Is that better? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Awesome department. Um, she wasn't liking what we were doing, I guess. Um, so some customers, they won't want some of that stuff to go over the t-shirts. So what I would recommend is if they, if they have um, giving you the ability, maybe if you want to do stitch in the ditch around some of them. Mm -hmm. um, like I've done, a, I've done a t-shirt quote before where I've done meandering, um, but there was uh, four pictures on parts of the t-shirt quilt um, on memories of, uh, the, it was for her granddaughter. So her granddaughter playing different sports. And so she didn't want me to quilt over those. Mm -hmm. So I did stitch in the ditch around them, but did the meander everywhere else. Everywhere else, yeah. So, so. you need a steady hand to do pantographs? Huh? A steady hand yes. to do pantographs. Well, you don't. Yes, I, I, I understand the question. I got you. Yeah. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> now, um, tech, you don't really have to have a steady hand to do it. What I recommend, so on instance, let's take that one and come over. Here. Yeah, I'll okay. take that one. So, for instance, you have one like this, a little tighter of a pattern. But really, when you're working with a pattern or any pantograph, for instance, this is just the one that we grabbed, you want to use the line as more of a guide. Because if you're staying right on top of that line, uh, you'll, you're going to be really tense and it's really going to hurt up in your shoulders a lot. Um, but if you're using it as a guide, it'll be more flowy and it's going to look a lot more natural. The only thing I do recommend is when you get to points, say it in your head. So you get to a point, you're going to say point and then continue to go, point, continue to go. Your points will be a lot sharper that way. I, you, you've done a more pantographs than I have, but that's what I would, <laughs> that's what I think is the best yeah. recommendation. Yeah, and the one you. thing I do on the pantographs on the, on when you have the laser is to look in front of the laser, kind of like you drive a car, you look in front, you don't look at the road. Mm -hmm. It actually helps you guide much easy, easier. You look at, you gotta look at the road though. You look at the road, but look you don't look ahead. straight down. You look at the road ahead. I got you. Got, okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna move into some some of more. more oh, we uh, got one. Oh wait, one more. Did you do the? I did that one. The Texas one. Oh yes, that one. That, oh yeah, I guess you're right. It is a little bit more, more, than the medium. more medium. Yeah. So this is one that we have. It's called American Patriot, and this is um, a very patriotic pattern. We have parts of the. Okay, that's good. Okay, so we have our American flag, um, then it goes into saying America the the eagle and then we've got stars throughout it so this is kind of more on the medium side you're getting into more if you want to bring it closer yeah. um we're getting more into there we go we're getting more into getting into the pattern working with different shapes of it um so it's just a little more on the medium side it is and the points because a lot of people have difficulties with the stars mm -hmm. like you said you just got to think point 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 yeah and you can get it and you'll get yeah, those points perfectly look great on a Valor quilt. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It would look. It would look absolutely amazing mm -hmm. on a quilt of Valor quilt. All right. 
So, okay. so we got that one. So we have uh, butterflies, which is a little bit on the medium side as well. Cool. But it's more of the circles, so yeah. it's not does not as, po as many points. Yeah. So you're coming into the butterfly, you're following it around, coming into the wing, taking one of the circles, one of the circles point back around to continue going. And this is a continuous pattern. It's just going up and down between the butterflies. So a little more on the medium side. Mm -hmm. Okay, and for all of you that have children in sports, this I've done this one myself, so <laughs> it is more on the medium side. It uh, takes a little bit of time to get in there and do the little uh, inside, but it is the same thing, point, 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 and then, you know, go in and do the little bit. It all kind of... Yeah, and yes. so they do make the pattern wider. This is just yes. one of the smaller sections. But what this is is you do these this row up here at first because these footballs are connected. This is going up and down, up and down, up and down, mm -hmm. up and down, and then you would come back to do the next row. Um, or they do make one that is just one big piece of the one two big piece that just that has the footballs. Yeah. yeah. So, and like I said, each size that you get, they they look differently on the size of the papers. And stuff right. Like that. And Vivian, the reverse boiling question, um, we can get to at the end. It's really different depending on the type of machine that you have. So we're not ignoring that question. I see that question there. Okay. I've done so this, this one, one as well. This is soccer balls. Yes. Um, and this is just a row of soccer balls and stars and then a second row. Um, so kind of more on the medium side as well, on the, on the sports side. You're just coming in. This is can where it can get a little more intricate. And I'll pull a little closer is you can just get in and do these separate pieces to make that full soccer ball. Okay. And this is actually, we can actually talk about this too. Okay. Uh, we'll bring this one back. I like that. I okay. Now is this getting into a more intricate Yeah, that was more okay. intricate. So we have three more that are more intricate so you can get an idea of the different... Oh, upside down. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so this is our this is the solar system one. So you can see that you've got um, Jupiter and Saturn, the Earth, stars. Um, so it's just a little more. If you want to bring it in a little closer, uh -huh. it, it's just a little more on the intricate side. Um, there's a lot of different uh, pieces of it, um, but it turns out beautifully on quilts. It does. Yeah. It's gorgeous. I'm actually working on the solar system quilt now. Oh, I think this is the one for it. I know. I think this is the one for it. <laughs> okay, so we'll grab that side of the Okay. So this is definitely more intricate. Yes. Definitely. Um, there's a lot of different designs going on here. You have your overall flower. Um, you're getting into different parts of the feather, swirls, um, berries, I guess is what you would yeah, call these. Like <laughs> so um, it's just a lot more intense, uh, more dense quilting. Mm -hmm. um, so but it is some, it is a lot easier to follow for the intricates um, because it, it's um, there's not really much overlapping on it. It's just one really continuous line. You're mm -hmm. not doing very yeah. very intricate stuff except for on the berry section. But other than that, yeah, it's nice and, and there's to not as many points. I mean, yeah. there's some on here, but it's more nice of just flowy. an easy flow. Yeah. yeah. Good. So so I got one more. Yes. Wow. All right. This is a great border or sashing pattern. Yes, because this is a six inch pattern. So for Halloween, fallish. So this is definitely so. something that is going to be in that more intricate section. You can see that you've got the different sides of the pumpkin: his eyes, his nose, his, his mouth, the, the jack o' lantern, really not the pumpkin. Yeah. Um, you've got the the leaves, um, and on these you can see. Let me get closer to one of the pumpkins. Uh, go to the left a little bit, right there. Okay. So you can see right here, and there's red pieces, and this is telling you when you're coming into the pattern, follow the red line to continue the pattern. So it's not getting you confused. A lot of the patterns, when you do stuff that overlaps themselves, they'll give you different colored lines to follow. Yes. Um, in the process, so you don't get confused. Okay. Very good. Um, okay. And so, if you want to grab that pattern, this one right yeah. here. Okay. Um. You wanted to show something on yes, it. Yes, I did. Oh. Okay. Do we have a question? No, I just said I have a set of bonuses. Oh, never mind. Yeah. That's exactly what I meant. That's what you want to yeah, do. Okay. 
place our box. So right. we're going to come over here to the machine to kind of show you how we have it set up. This one right here. Alrighty. So when we're looking at our pattern, um, the first thing that you want to do is you really want to line it up. Um, some yes. <laughs> I, I'm the expert on it, so you, okay, you got to you you know, back stand, up a little I'll bit. <laughs> you do it. So, what you want to do is line up the, um, you put on your quilt first, and then what you're going to do is on here, you're going to line up the pattern from, as you can tell from one side of the quilt, you see the, the uh, tape, and then I measure it over to the, yes. Well, you want to make sure that it's um, the laser is on the corner of that tape, which is on the corner of your machine, on your quilt. And then you go down to the same, at the other end, the same thing. You're going to want the laser to be right at the corner, to be up here at the corner as well. And that's how you, you start off the pattern. You have it all ready, and then you basically start quilting and you go around did you want me to go ahead quilt a little no okay I didn't start that. Um, so as you could tell on here you see the red lines when you would start quilting on this particular one I would actually start here because this is the beginning of it and take it around and then follow this red line so I don't get confused to go back over again and then when you're deciding to when you get done with this row and you're gonna go to the next row most of the the quilt the uh, patterns have dots on them where it says top of pattern. What you're going to do is put your laser on there, and that's the top of your pattern, and put your needle down and see what it does is it holds your needle down. And then you're just going to roll it back all the way. You want to be really careful, uh, really yes. slow when you're low, uh, rolling it back because you have your needle down in there. And you're going to go two clicks past the red dot. And then the reason why they go two clicks past the red dot is because you're going to tighten up on the other ones. And when you tighten up, it's going to bring you back to the red dot. So we also, this is kind of the, um, and then you're basically, automatically, you can start right back over to your next pattern. You don't have to change anything. You don't have to change your laser, nothing. It's all together. You just go to the next pattern and the next pattern. So, All right. um, so this was just a really brief description. Um, one more thing in the brief description that I do want to recommend, and I'm sure you've seen this before, mm -hmm. is when you're loading, you have your uh, quilt top loaded on. Mm -hmm. And so when we're loading our quilt tops, we're looking at it from top to bottom, yes. right? So when we put our patterns on, if you're loading it that way and you have a directional pattern, so like those pumpkins that are going, yeah. if the faces are up, um, if you have a directional pattern, you want to put the pattern upside down. Let me grab it. Yeah. So it'll replicate on the quilt. That way. So yeah. let's say we're doing these. Yeah. We're doing these pumpkins on this quilt, and we want it to look like so on the quilt because we've loaded the quilt straight on. Mm -hmm. If we want it to look that way, we've got to load it on our table upside down from the way that we would think in our minds that we actually load it. So when we're quilting it out, it's going to replicate this design right side up on the mm -hmm. quilt. That is one big thing to remember. Yeah. Um, um, or if you want to be able to look at the pattern right side up on the back side of the machine, you would just have to put the quilt top on backwards. So whatever works easier for you. Mm -hmm. So like I said, this was just a brief description. Yeah. Um, we do have a video on our YouTube channel about uh, pantograph quilting. That goes into a little more depth about it for you. Uh, okay. This one? Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, as of right now, we actually ha we have over 400 patterns that are all different skill levels, and our patterns are 10% off. Woo! That's great. Um, and then Kathy had yeah, a... What was the name of the big flower I, pattern? I, I saw... <laughs> okay. Kathy had a question about the big flower pattern. This one is called Feathered Rose Collection 2. So, and this and they cool. have numbers on them as well. Yeah, they kind of so help out a little feathered bit. Feathered Rose Collection 2, and it's number, get it all rolled up on me, number 34 in, uh, in Linda Taylor's lineup.